Okay, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, welcome to Philip Futures webinar. My name is Vincent and I'm your MC tonight. Before I start, please have a look on the disclaimer slide. Today's webinar is provided to you for general information and does not constitute any recommendation. This webinar is just for sharing and education purpose. You may wish to seek advice from a qualified financial advisor, persons to a separate engagement, before making a commitment to purchase any of the investment product mentioned. Okay, I will start to introduce my company, Philip Futures. Philip Futures is incorporated on 7 October 1995, and it is wholly owned subsidiary of Philip Capital Holdings and Rambahat. In Malaysia, total we have four branches and our HQ is based in KL. In West Malaysia, we have branches in Penang, Kota Damansara, Melaka, and Jebi. In Jebi, we have two branches. One is in Taman Sutra Utama and another one is in Taman Mole. While in East Malaysia, the Philip Investor Center will be at Kuching. For your information, there is a new branch coming up in Sarawak, Cebu. Philip Future is a legal license holder with a license of CMSL. Philip Future is trading participant of Busa Malaysia Derivative Exchange and also clearing participant of Busa Derivative Clearing Berhad. Philip Futures is the first broker house in Malaysia to provide the online trading platform for both local and foreign products to our clients. Amongst the professional traders in Malaysia, uh, they rank and commend us as one of the top choices of futures broking company. In the global network, we not just have our company in Malaysia or Singapore, we have office around 15 countries, which including Asian and Western country. Let's see in the world map. In Asia, uh, we have office in India, China, Japan, Vietnam, Cambodia, Australia, Singapore, Malaysia, Thailand, Indonesia, and Dubai. While office in Western country are US, UK, French, and Turkey. Philip Future is provided to our client one-stop solution for their business. The reason is because Philip Future is offer uh, many types of products such as index futures we have fkri dojon hang seng uh, metal futures we have gold silver agriculture future we have us soybean coffee and wheat energy future we have crude oil and the last is interest rate futures we have us treasury note how can we offer so many products to you it is because philip future is subscribing many foreign exchange in asia Europe, we have Eurex Exchange. In Japan, we have Tokong and OSE. In Hong Kong, we have Hong Kong Exchange. Singapore, we have Singapore Exchange. Malaysia, we have Busa Malaysia Derivative. On the other hand, UK, we have ICE, eBot, NIBOT, and IPE. While US, we have CME, CBOT, COMEX, and NIMAX. Platform and infrastructure that suit your needs. Philip Future not just offer many type, uh, many type of product to our clients. We also provide a platform which is CQG and DT and our new platform Philip Nova. CQG and DT are more suitable and suggested to those professional traders. So next is our Philip Nova. Okay, when you open an account with us, the Philip Nova will be offered to you and it is more suitable for normal trader. Uh, inside Philip Nova client, you not just can customize your own portfolio and platform, and is very friendly used to those beginner traders. Furthermore, Philip Nova is available on desktop version and mobile version for our client. Inside Philip Nova uh, desktop version, it is web based, and you can see the price list, your order status, and also your trading uh, position in one screen. Besides, uh, now we made some enhancement in our uh, Philip Nova. Now you can see the chatting and market news in this platform. Okay, this is our mobile version of Philip Nova. So Philip Nova mobile version is almost same as the desktop version. Uh, it is web-based. You can see the price list, order status, and so on. Uh, let's say today you don't want to bring your laptop outside or you can so you can trade by using this uh, by using your mobile and log in this Philip Nova. 
Philip Nova can easily to trade, for example, like uh, when you want to enter your position or want to close your position and you are outside without a laptop. Just Philip Nova is user friendly, better stability, customizable, and can access to local and foreign product. Okay, why to choose Philip Futures? The main reason is Philip Future is offer you a 24 hours broking and execution support, which means we have nine desks in HQ to support our client, even though in night time. And it's important for those clients who trade uh, foreign product. All you need to do is just call to our branch leading line. Uh, our nine desks will do their best to provide you our service. Moreover, uh, we will provide you the latest market news and also market analysis by daily sending the commentary via email. And yes, we also provide advisory service. First, we hope that uh, you can learn with Philip Futures and yes, we provide one-to-one -one coaching section and it is free. Uh, if, you are our, if you are new in Futures market or you are new, our new client, you don't know how to use our platform, so we will provide you one-to-one -one coaching section. And we also provide free seminar and webinar like today, and also free account opening. Okay, now is the most interesting part, which is our Philip Futures promotion. Okay, the promotion is Trade CME Micro E Mini Contract at USD 1.8. The promotion is like this: uh, If you are our client and you trade CME Micro E Mini Contract with minimum ten lots within a month, then you are entitled for the commission of USD 1.8. Uh, the promotion period is from 15 January until 30 April. This campaign is by registration only. Uh, if you want to join this promotion, you can scan our uh, bug uh, QR code, okay? Or you want to know more details about this promotion, you can visit our website. Okay, I believe some of you already know what is a micro e-mini contract, right? And yes, there are four index futures and one meta futures. Let's say today uh, you want to see the chart. Okay, so all you need to do is just refer to the normal original chart of the contract. Uh, for example, today you want to track micro e mini Dow Jones, so you just refer to the mini Dow Jones futures chart we do. Okay, why you need to trade micro e mini contract? Uh, it is because it's small margin compared with the uh, e mini counterparts. Okay, it is gold black trading hour, from Giver contract. Versatility to manage position, uh, precisely scale index exposure up and down, and it is strong global participation. Okay, next is our Facebook page. Uh, I believe most of you have Facebook account, right? So you can search our Facebook, Philip Futures and Rampart Heart, and give us a like. Uh, we will frequently share our promotion, seminar, and webinar in our Facebook page. Other than Facebook page, you also can find us in Telegram. Just search Philip Futures and join our Telegram. You can see our sharing like daily market updates, uh, Busa, Malaysia, Trust Statistic, and the latest market news inside there. Okay, this is uh, our Philip Futures contact line and email address. If you want to talk to us, uh, you can call our dealing number. The dealing line is our hotline and it's 24 hour on call. You may also have a look on our web page. Uh, the address is www.philipfutures.com.my. In our page, uh, we, we will share our company promotion, our service, and many things related to Philip Futures. Okay, that's all for the introduction of Philip Futures. And next, our main speaker today, Mr. David Ng, to you. So David is currently a full-time proprietary trader in Iceberg X Sandrian Berhad. In his current role, uh, David regularly trades product in local and regional market. In his previous role uh, with Philip Futures Sandrian Berhad, David served as a specializing in commodities like uh, crude oil and crude palm oil. In this role, uh, David was frequently approached by regional market to provide his view on the market. Okay, today the topic of webinar is learn to trade the micro e-mini indices and go contract, uh, which, will talk, which will talk about the, the fundamental approach to trade micro, incorporate seasonality as part of your trading plan, building a comprehensive trading plan, and learn the step needed to start your trading journal. Okay, so let us welcome uh, David. 
Okay. Um, thank you, Vincent, for the kind introduction. Um, just before I start, I'd just like to do a sound check. If you can hear me clearly, can you just type in the chat box that you can hear me clearly because uh, sometimes it could be a technical issue. Okay, seems that uh, everyone can hear me. So yeah, firstly, thank you everyone for coming to this uh, webinar uh, from the comfort of your home. Um, and I'd like to thank uh, Philip as well as CME you know, uh, for hosting this platform. Um, and I think it's quite timely for me to do this webinar given that the volatility that we have seen in the market. Um, so this, um, this webinar is actually more towards uh, traders who are new to the market. So we have a bit of experience. This may be something of a uh, probably something that can refresh you, you know, or give you a new idea. But for those who are new in the journey, um, I believe now is a great time. It's the opportune time for uh, new traders to embark onto the market to start their trading, uh, to start their trading as a to start their journey as a trader. Okay. Um, just before I start, a simple disclaimer that uh, whatever I presented here probably will be just be uh, for educational purpose. Um, whatever. Uh, any buy call or sell call is purely for educational purpose. Don't take it too seriously. Uh, and even later on, when we go down to the trading plan, um, as you know, as trading is very fluid, very dynamic. So every traders will have a different type of, uh, I would say, a trading method or methodology. Uh, what I can best say is that do do trade on what best fits you. Um, of course, later on when I share my trading plan, is that's that's sort of like a benchmark or probably a starting ground where you can start and you can expand further. Uh, but I do like to emphasize that if you are currently on uh, your own, you have your own trading plan and it does give you good results, stick to it. Um, you don't have to tweak it so much. Now, as long as in in this trading uh, journey, you just have to make sure that you are consistently in the game. Now, um, I think this outline today is just going to comprise of two parts. The first part will mainly be talking about um, the fundamental approach of trading. Um, I know many of us are, you know, in, in this trading journey, a lot of us will start off as a technical trader. You look at charts, you look at parameters, you look at uh, indicators for you to decide a trade setup. Uh, but I do believe um, coming from my previous background uh, as a previous analyst, um, fundamentals do give you a comprehensive picture and one trader should always incorporate the fundamental uh, picture into the overall plan because it does give you uh, how do you see the market reaction on the medium to longer term basis. Um, so I'm just going to cover a bit on the fundamental approach to trading, especially on the four major uh, micro uh, micro e-mini indices uh, as well as gold, which is a currently a hot uh, commodity. Um, I'm I'm also a big fan of seasonality. Um, later on, I'm just going to share with you some of the seasonality play that's in some of these uh, uh, indices as well as commodities. Um, and the key thing that I would like to share in this presentation is building up a trading plan because I I believe the motto that I always hear outside is if you fail to plan, you technically plan to fail. So trading plan is a necessity is a necessity for a beginner trader and it definitely will help you to kickstart your journey into trading. Um, and I'm just going to share with you some of the tools that I use currently, uh, especially when I look into the four major uh, e-micro, micro e-mini indices as well as gold. Now, just to give you a very brief overview on how the global market situation is. This is purely the fundamental play. Um, I think if you have witnessed the market for the past couple of weeks, it has been a very volatile uh, situation. Um, especially in US markets, you have looked at the key major indices like the Dow Jones, uh, even the S&P 500, it has almost reached to a ter territory of 30% from the high. Um, so technically, it's, it's in a negative trajectory. Um, will this likely to continue? In my honest opinion, it's slightly going to stay uh, at this point. At this point in time, it's still going to be very negative, uh, affected by you know, COVID-19, uh, which um, we don't see the light at the end of the tunnel. Now, um, I think the global economy growth is going to be in question. Um, whether it's, do we see a rebound? Um, we are unlikely to see a strong rebound in, in quarters to come. Um, in fact, I think some of the major analysts in town are looking at the growth to only come back probably next year. Um, so with this in mind, I think majority of the traders should be always keeping in mind uh, 
whenever there's a rebound, whether the rebound can be sustained. Um, and the, the overall trend is still clear, it's still going to be a downtrend given the expectation of the global market. Um, now, this side, I just want to point to you that uh, the current levels you are seeing right now is almost reaching global financial crisis level, which is back in 2007, 2008. Um, now, we we won't know what will happen um, probably in, in, in the six months to eight months time because it's very dependent on the developments that we're seeing in COVID-19, whether we find a vaccine and that will probably spur the economy further. Um, but I think currently at the current juncture where, where we are at, we are still seeing that the market is still pretty much factoring a very uh, negative perception, especially in the US market. Um, so you look at the global growth, nothing too optimistic about it. We are looking at growth at about 1.5%, which is comparatively very low. In fact, uh, just last year, I think it was third quarter last year, uh, IMF or even OECD was predicting that this year economic growth as a overall, as a totality will grow by 3%. But you know, since then, we just cut half given the pandemic uh, of COVID-19 that we, they are very missing. So overall, it's still a very negative view. Um, now, US is a very tricky market. Um, in fact, I think uh, if you just read the news, the Senate has passed 2.2 trillion US dollars. I think it's the biggest and massive, um, you know, uh, fiscal exercise they have done for many, many, many years. Um, will this help the market? I think it very much depends. The market is not factoring too positive on that news. Uh, but what I can see, and this is more of a personal opinion, is that the 2.2 trillion dollars is just will not be. Um, sufficient in the term. In fact, we are actually looking at Federal Reserve to even inject more towards uh, as we go to the medium term. Um, as a trader, we are always very focused on key uh, macroeconomic news that can impact on the market because we need to position ourselves. Um, so given the negative sentiment they are seeing in the global market, US is no different. Um, so if you just look at the IHS market uh, gauge, they are showing a US services to contract to 39.1. Anything below 50 is actually contraction uh, territory. So US is actually in a very deep recession, if you ask me. Um, and you know, just beginning of uh, late last year, we were saying we were so happy that uh, China and US finally agreed to sign the phase one deal. But I think that is also in jeopardy given the current situation they are seeing right now. Um, so do keep this in mind. I think going forward, market is going to be even more volatile and the unpredictability of the market it is it's getting very hard to predict. Um, now, this is definitely a chart that trader likes to see because when you have spike in volatility, which is measured by the VIX index, uh, you can see intraday ranges across all major markets to be very volatile. If you are a scalper, you trade on an intraday basis, you can definitely, you, you will definitely like this market. Um, but this is something that we need to take note. Um, if you just look at the risk index itself, just uh, two weeks ago, we have approached to a point whereby the risk, or we call it a fear index, has reached uh, the global financial crisis level. And that shows how fearful the market is in general. Um, as uh, we all say, when market is fearful, there's always an opportunity aside. So trader will always hunt for opportunity. Uh, but market in general are at this point in time are very skeptical and therefore they are rushing to any safe haven currencies or even especially the dollar. Now, um, this chart shows you how massive uh, down all the key primary indices in US have strong has plunged uh, over the past two months. Um, so as a common investor or even a, a trader will perhaps will say, oh, look, you know, we have come to 30% point of view. Should we be able to enter at this level? Well, the mark, you, there's always a saying, you don't catch a falling knife. We never know when the market is going to bottom. Given the current situation and current climate, unlikely the bottom is going to be formed in the near term. We just have to see how uh, the global pandemic is going to play out. Uh, whether are we going to see any positive signs in the next uh, month or so, uh, probably then we can make a better judgment on whether the equity market is likely to bottom. But right now, given the current scenario and the situation that we're seeing, unlikely uh, we are able to gauge the current uh, the current equity market to be a bottom. Um, now, this 
chart shows you uh, the high high yield spreads between some of the major U.S. corporate bonds. Um, and this is this past two weeks development has been quite uh, quite interesting in a way that the yield spread has actually spiked up to even uh, the 2015 uh, level where actually the government came in to intervene into the market. Um, now, whenever you have yield spread which is spiking up, it indicates that the market is not comfortable with uh, the overall debt situation in the country, whether it's in the corporate or in the country itself. Um, obviously, we are seeing um, market conditions are not variable at the moment. Uh, unemployment rate is going to inch higher and higher. So corporate debt situations are going to get even more difficult. So we are likely to see default rates going higher. And if this is true, um, I think the market stimulus that is that we should expect from Federal Reserve should be even more greater. Um, so as a trader, uh, if you, you need to be aware of such situation whereby uh, our corporate loans our corporate, corporate loans defaulting at a higher rate you know, on a month-to-month -month basis or on a weekly basis, it does give you a signal on where the economy journey is going to hit. So as a trader, we need to take note you know, uh, of all these little uh, I'll call it the macro indicators that should be we should be watchful for. Now, this this is on top of every month, uh, everyone's minds right now, the development of COVID-19. Um, I, I think as you can see from this chart, it's clearly um you can see the major uh difference between uh, some of the major developed economies. Uh, we can see the widespread are now heading into US, UK, Spain, Italy. Uh, even Australia, you know, and even our home base in Malaysia. So I think generally China is quite self-contained, but regions outside of China, the spread seems to be getting wider and wider. We have not seen the end in sight. So really, is this a matter of um, timing as it is on whether can we able to create a vaccine uh, just in time? Um, so my, given the current situation, um, I think if you just look at US, they surpassed 1,000 deaths uh, with 60,000 60, cases. I think it's, it's, going to get, it's going to get wider and it's going to get bigger. And this will definitely prompt fiscal measures by the government. And the government needs to step up even more measures in order to safeguard their economy. So as a trader, we need to be very aware, especially of these COVID-19 developments, because it does affect on our views on how we see the market, possibly in the medium term. Um, so this is something that uh, we as a trader, we need to be very uh, careful of. Now, um, some of the key economic uh, events and key economic indicators that the trader should always be very mindful is always Fed FOMC meeting. Um, these are the list of dates. Um, now, just as a you know, before COVID-19 did get the widespread attention, uh, normally, you know, we always follow FOMC meeting quite closely on schedule, but just last two weeks itself, or even in fact last uh, uh, last month ago, we can see that the Federal Reserve has moved into a very sharp movement. If they can just call for an emergency meeting and straight away they will just make a decision to do an emergency measures to the market because they think that the white the COVID nineteen. Um, situation is going to affect that economy into a greater scale. So I think we do expect, even though we can skip to this FOMC schedule, but do expect more emergency action for F from Federal Reserve between uh, some of the dates that are given. And I think if you just look at what uh, Federal Reserve has been, has been telling the public for the past couple of days, it's quite clear that they're trying to pump prime the economy um, to, more un to more quantitative easing. And in fact, um, if just in my own owner's opinion, when I look at the Federal Reserve uh, Fed rate policies, the rates has been cut from one over percent to right down to close to zero percent. So that's quite a limited room for Federal Reserve to move to in terms of monetary ammunition. So this is something that we need to take note. Um, of course, moving forward, FOMC schedule meeting is still very important. Um, as a trader, some of traders who like actions, they like to trade on that day, on that particular day itself, where FOMC uh, meeting help, but some traders they don't like the volatility. They tend to avoid the volatility. They they do they do avoid to trade on that day. So it actually depends on what type of trader you are. If you like volatility, you like the the big range for the day. Then obviously you can just look at FOMC uh, dates and you did just trade on that. 
but do beware because um, I think the current scenario and current dynamic has changed a lot. Um, and I just mentioned in between dates, they can just do an emergency action from Fed and that can change the whole ball game. Now, um, I think this leads to a very important point, which is um, how good is the quantitative easing by Federal Reserve? Um, I think you just look at the actions for the past few weeks, it's clearly indicating that Federal Reserve is trying to inject a lot of liquidity into the market to give the confidence to the market, to tell to the market that um, you know, everything is fine. We still have monetary bullet to really prime the economy if need be. So there's no point to panic. But by giving, uh, by pumping more monetary uh, money into the system, you're actually creating an inflationary environment. And in this environment, it's actually very conducive for gold as a safe haven asset. Um, now, I think gold is kind of a very hot topic. If you just look at uh, the chart on the left, you can see how gold has reached the bottom of $1,475 before rebounding. That was when uh, you know, um, Federal Reserve just announced that they're going to uh, launch an unlimited quantitative easing. And immediately the market just went berserk uh, 100 over US dollars on a single day basis. So if you're a macro trader, you do have to be very careful on such announcements. It can affect the market in a very severe way. So if you get it right, you know, you, you make your money, but if you get it wrong, you really can have a big damage. So you have to make sure you keep your losses tight. You keep your stop losses tight in such an event. Um, now the chart on the right, I'm just showing you a comparison between the gold futures and the dollar index. Now, the funny thing is that in, in historically, we always perceive uh, do, the gold movement against the dollar index is always an inverse relationship. Whenever there's a strong dollar, you have a weak gold market. But in recent times, we are seeing it a bit differently, especially for the past couple of weeks. We have seen the dollar index strengthen. And the funny thing is that, um, you know, you saw how downturns plunged 30%. In fact, gold should have increased by the same peril. But in fact, we are seeing, you know, um, gold plunge from 1,700 US dollar at the top, right down to 1,475. Now, I think that explains uh, you know, there's a cash crunch in the market. Everybody was just liquidating gold. Now, the scenario for gold now is slightly different. Um, although we, we still can relatively base the relationship between dollar index against gold on an inverse basis, but that relationship doesn't hold always, uh, you know, and it's always quite broken in recent times. Um, so if you are a trader, if you just want to trade on the basis of looking at the US dollar, you just have to be very mindful if you're trading gold. Um, I think there's a couple of reasons to it. Uh, whatever Federal Reserve is doing in the market is actually affecting how gold performance is going to do. So do be careful whenever you're trading gold. Uh, don't just base on dollar index, or even how Dow Jones perform, because you know, um, whatever historical relationship, it may not be repeated this time around. Now, <clears throat> As a trader, fundamental trader, we always look at a comic calendar because these are something that uh, uh, traders, you always want to know when's the action going to be. The market is going to be very aggressive whenever there's a certain announcement on the economy. Um, so I think investing.com is a very good example. You can see they have a very good, perfect uh, economic calendar where you can actually gauge uh, what type of uh, key news that can affect the market. So um, you just look at this a sample of some of the key events like FOMC is definitely a a mass or even the manufacturing index you know, or even um, the PPI, purchasing, purchasing power index. So these are some of the key economic uh, events that the trader should always be aware of. Um, just to keep it simple, you can just go to the economic calendar that is on investing.com and just search for any events that's very significant. It will be highlighted by the three rules that you can see. So as a trader, you always be very mindful when those events are happening. And if you want to take a piece of action, you know, that's where you have to be. Uh, that's, that's the event that you'll be watching for. Now, um, one, there's so many other economic indicators that a trader look at, especially when you are looking at fundamental uh, per se. Uh, one of it, I think, is ISM. I think it's uh, basically a manufacturing index. You have the manufacturing and the non-manufacturing. Um, it's always the first business day of the month for the man manufacturing and the third business day for the non-manufacturing. 
Now, these numbers are very key because it does affect the market. And if you, if you want to track how the, the relative, the, the index measure is, you just have to look at the overall picture. Um, and market tends to be very volatile, especially uh, the releases of these numbers. So you have to be very careful. Uh, and these are the dates for the year. So if you want to just take note, some of the key dates in your calendar, especially when you're trading the US market. Um, just to show an effect, this was, I think this was on the February uh, ISN numbers. Uh, in fact, I think the index rose. This was before where COVID-19 gets a bit serious. Um, in fact, the US market was actually very rosy uh, towards the, the beginning and the end of Jan and beginning February, but things start to take a turn towards the mid-February. Um, so if you just look at the manufacturing index, it rose from 54.2 to 55.2, which is indicating a one or percentage point of increase, which is good for the market. And you can see how the bar has moved uh, easily on S&P 500, it moved at least 30 points. So these are some of the key things that you have to take note as a trader. Uh, when you have a, a good economic news better than expected, you tend to expect the market to move uh, you know, higher. And that's where you should find a position to enter a long position instead of finding a position to short. Uh, if you got it on the wrong side, you make sure that you have to cut your position fast. <clears throat> now, um, as I said earlier on, you just have to look at the overall trend in order for you to gauge where the market is going to hit. Um, this, this was what I took a snapshot. It's still a family num February numbers. I think March onwards, the numbers are going to be very negative. So that's where um, my overall view of the US market is still going to be very negative at the moment. Um, in fact, I think US preliminary numbers are showing manufacturing to be below 50, approaching even uh, to the level of 40, 40 level. So I think US is in a very tricky position. Um, you have to be very careful, uh, especially at this point in time when you are trading the US market. Now, so that's on the manufacturing side. Another key parameter is always the employment numbers. Um, if you are trading on the US side, you have to be very careful on employment numbers because it does affect um, the market as a whole. So these are the dates. Again, you can save it in your calendar. Uh, so if you just want to trade on employment dates, you can always uh, you know, be, be prepared on that, on that release day. Now, this is uh, just an example of a release of non-fund payroll. So non farm payroll actually rose in February. Again, this was before the widespread of COVID-19 uh, in US. So it actually rose 273,000, um, no, against 175,000. And I think unemployment rate uh, each even lower 3.5%. I think this was um, the highest in, in pretty, I mean, the lowest employment rate in history. Uh, I think the market got a boost. Um, so again, I think unemployment numbers do have an impact on the market, and this is what market traders are watching very closely. Now, um, the key thing about this employment dynamic, things has changed. Um, and we just look at recent numbers, the jobless claims has actually increased sharply. It's above 250,000. Now, this is a sign of concern. As we move towards months ahead, um, now US, we are in are predicting to go into a deeper recession, do expect jobless claims to go higher and higher. And I think this will be a key barometer on whether the US market is set for a rebound. A market cannot see a rebound if the market, uh, if the jobless claims keeps going higher and higher. Unemployment rate is also another figure and unemployment rate is uh, likely to be on the low side, but it's slowly going to inch higher we see some of the key analysts are expecting unemployment rate to plunge by 30% month-to-month basis. I think that's that's pretty huge. So if you're a trader, you have to be very careful um, whenever you look at uh, unemployment figures. Now, this is just a, um, another key thing that uh, on a macro level, if you're a fundamental trader, you, you have to be very careful of economic news. Um, and these things are unpredictable. It can happen anytime. Um, and as a trader, you just have to be on the screen most of the time when these things happen. If you've got a position, you just have to make sure you, you, your, lo your stop losses are tight because it can very move in a very sharp way. Um, so this was an announce announcement where you know, uh, Fed is ready to do unlimited QE and that caught the market by surprise. Um, so between that day, you can see a 100 points increase between an hour. 
uh, on an S&P 500. So you know, if you are a trader, you really do need to be very careful, especially when you have this kind of news. And this is something that's unpredictable. Um, you know, central bank announcement can be any time. They don't have to follow a fixed schedule. And you know, this, they just see how and they assess how, this, how dire is the situation of the market before they decide. So do, do watch out this kind of space. Uh, and as, as a trader, you just have to make sure, you no, know, we cannot avoid when the timing is. The thing we can only do is that you just have to make sure every position that you enter, uh, you know, you just have to have a tight stop loss in order to safeguard uh, you know, any position that goes against you. Now, um, coming to the next part, seasonality. Now, this just to show you the gold price seasonality for the past 20 years. Um, so, break down into months from January to December. Now, um, in, I will say last year, this seasonality plays a more important role. But this time around, market dynamics has changed a lot. Uh, reason for me to say that is because if you just look at the behavior of the market in general, it's actually breaking out of historical trend and seasonality. But however, it, it does give you a gauge or it does give you a reference on how you can see the market going forward. So this is for gold. You can see those uh, boxes highlighted by green are basically month to month. Uh, they are positive funds. Red are basically they are negative. So if you just look at the month itself, for gold, January, you can see strong months are always the beginning of the year. But when you go towards the third quarter or even the second quarter, things are starting to get a bit weak. So if the gold performance uh, in weeks to come follow a similar trajectory to a historical pattern, do expect the second and third quarter to be a weak quarter for gold. And if it's something that is, um, as a trader, you need to be very mindful of, um, especially whether are you entering a strong period or the weak period. Now this is for Dow Jones. I think Dow Jones is uh, pretty similar. Uh, if you just look at, the funny thing is that, you know, March and April seems to be a very good month historically speaking, for the past 20 years. However, things have changed, as I just mentioned. You know, given the rise of COVID-19 as a pandemic, uh, we have seen March, February and March to be a, the worst months you know, in history. Um, so this may not paint a very, uh, this may not be a very good reference, uh, but you know, generally if, you, if things start to settle down, the dust start to settle down, you know, maybe we tend to follow back historical pattern, we wouldn't know. But generally, I would say the first quarter of the year, um, in, index tends to perform well and towards the end quarter. The only quarter that's not doing well is always the second third quarter. So if you are always thinking to long a position, you know, always try to do it on the first quarter. The second and third quarter always be thinking you know, the position for you to short. But this is based, based on 20 years data. Of course, the more years data you have, um, the more accurate you can predict. Uh, your more, more accurate is your prediction. Now this for S&P 500 is pretty much a similar trend like Dow Jones uh, because you know, it's still an indices product. Um, and you can see that again, second and third quarter is always the weakest one. Um, and you know, you just have to be, as a trader, you just have to be mindful of where the seasonality plays at. Okay, so that covers uh, pretty much the fundamental aspect of trading. Uh, I think as a trader, we always want to make sure that uh, we know what's going on on the macro level, especially on the economic events that can happen, that can change your game. Um, but like I said, you know, as a beginner, as a beginner in the trading world, you always need a plan. And you know, it doesn't matter whether, you know, uh, how lengthy your plan is. Of course, you know, there's certain characteristics for plan. But importantly, you still need a plan. You cannot approach trading without a plan because technically you're going to the market blind. And therefore, your risk of losing is going to be very high. So this is something that I would definitely encourage. If you are new to trading, do have a plan. If you, if you are trade, currently trading and you don't have a trading plan, start building one. Okay, so what are characteristics, characteristics of a good trading plan? I think first thing is that, you know, um, you cannot have a plan that's too complicated, especially when it comes to trade setups. Um, you know, I'm, I'm meaning... In this industry for a couple of years now, I've seen many instances where, you know, traders will have like, just to enter a market, will have 10 different sets of indicators. Now, um, if you think it logically, is it necessary? 
because you tend to when you have too many in indicators you create a lot of conflict you know there's certain indicators that tells you okay it's not the time to enter but certain indicators that tell you, oh it's a good time to enter so how do you balance such conflict um so rule of thumb always keep your plans sim com uh, as simple as it is now um, another key aspect which i like to emphasize in the trading plan is always to review your plan uh, whereby you need to whether you be it a journal or trading journal that you keep it on a daily basis but you must always review because if you don't review you, you technically you have a good trading plan but you never know how good is your trading plan if you don't review it so reviewing is a very important part and it's a very important aspect whenever you want to build a trading plan um now some of the like key important tenets of a trading plan um you know um you can define whether you are you a technical trader or you're a fundamental trader or in fact some traders nowadays they incorporate both you know like i said um you no know, trading is pretty much an art and it's actually very really, it, it depends on how your risk appetite is and how comfortable you are if you are purely a technical trader so be it you know you're purely a combination of both yeah then just incorporate both and if you are for myself i'm pretty much a more of a technical trader so therefore you know, in my trading plan, it's always defining what is your technical trading setups. Um, and when I define those technical trading setups, I'm not too rigid with it in a sense that I must. So for example, later on, when I show you uh, moving averages, whereby one crosses the other, it must be a buy signal. I tend to be a bit more flexible in that sense. Um, so you know, when it comes to technical trading setups, you cannot be too rigid on your parameters. You still have to allow certain uh, 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 you have to give certain allowance. Um, the reason being is because it's simple. Market's dynamic. It's not rigid market. Market always changes, you know, on a second basis or even on a minute basis. So you cannot be too rigid on your uh, too technical parameters or your trading setups per se. Okay. Um, again, like I always emphasize, don't overcomplicate. Um, I know if you're a beginner, you like to attend courses uh, here and there, or you tend to read a lot of books. Knowledge is good but too much knowledge can confuse you sometimes. So like I said, you know, um, for you to build a proper setup that fits your appetite, it takes time. You know, it's always bit and, part, bit and pieces there. Um, and there's no fixed strategy that can always accommodate in every single market scenario. Strategy are meant to change. Even like myself, what I'm, whatever I'm sharing you today, it may change uh, next week or, or even the next day. So technical trading strategy, it will change accordingly. Um, but rule of thumb again is always to keep it simple. Uh, of course, the less parameter to use, you know, you'll be in, you'll be even faster in your decision making, uh, and therefore, you know, you 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 can actually minimize your loss in that way. Now, um, another key aspect is always to set your stop loss. Um, and again, don't be too rigid. Um, I've seen you know many traders who have this too rigid on setting stop losses so in fact every entry that uh, the trader goes in is actually hitting the stop losses and it is actually quite emotional drain for a trader to see a string of losses so um, it's important for you to set stop losses but don't be too rigid on it last but last but not least always review your trading mistakes um, i know people always tell you review your mistakes but it's also good sometimes to also review your winning streaks how do you do it or how do you achieve such a success on a certain um, time frame or certain market conditions so i'm just going to share with you today's trading plan uh, which i generally use for trading the micro immediate indices um, i think firstly is you always need to identify the major trend um, there's two types actually in fact there's three types of trend uptrend sideway trend or downtrend uh, and clearly you can see most markets now these are clearly on a downtrend so if you know and you have you have seen the macro picture you understand the macro picture as a trader whenever there's a rally is an opportunity for you to short because the macro picture is still a downtrend so later i'll show you what i mean by that um secondly we will incorporate moving averages moving averages you know we have many different types again uh, we always want to keep it simple um third thing is incorporating candlesticks now this candlesticks will be different is uh we call it an average candlesticks it's called haken ashi um later i'll just share on share with you deeper on what's that uh risk management is very important and use the atr or average true range as a way for us to manage our risk 
and fifth is always a trade review. So that five steps will actually comprises on how uh, a trading plan should have minimally. Now, the first one, identify major trend. Um, so on the left is clearly an uptrend. On the right of the on the presentation, it's clearly a downtrend. So on the uptrend, you can clearly see it's a higher high and a higher low. On the downtrend, you can clearly see it's a low high and lower low. So it's very clearly to differentiate. It's very clear. And this is what we mean by major trend. So in every during an uptrend, in every retracement and opportunity to long, don't think of shorting in the major uptrend. You are just catching, like the parable says, you're catching a falling knife. So always think during an uptrend, always think of positions or entries where you can long. Don't think of shorting. Now, same goes for a downtrend. Every time there's a there's a temporary dead cat bounce or there's a temporary rally, always think of a position for you to short because it's clearly was a downtrend. Okay, I'll just showing you some examples. Um, so you can see uh, those circles highlighted by blue, you can see it's clearly low, uh, higher high, higher low. So that's clearly an uptrend. And you can see it's peak around uh, at the top there, then before it hits lower. So you can see on the downtrend, you can see a lower high and lower low. So it's very clear for you to, how do you identify major trends? By looking at whether are they making a higher high or higher lows or making a lower high or lower lows. <clears throat> now, next thing is moving average. Now, moving average is sort of an indicator whereby, you know, is uh, I, I think majority of us, the, the moving average that I'm referring to here is the aromatic, the simple moving average. Um, it's just basically adding the recent closing prices and then dividing by the number of time periods. So if you're looking at 9 MA, it's a 9 day moving, moving periods. If it's a 20 days, it's a 20 days moving periods. So basically it's just taking an average of those closing prices. Um, now, there's a lot of uh, types of moving averages. You can have exponential, you can have weighted, you know, uh, you can have many others as well. But like I say, I just want to keep it simple because uh, you know it fits my personality in terms of trading this market. So therefore I'm using a simple. Obviously, like I said, if you know you're currently using a setup that is comfortable to you, you know, so be it. just continue to use it. Uh, but in my case, you know, I use a very uh, simple moving average that's quite sufficient for me, and I'm using a nine days and twenty days. Nine days signify pretty much a week of trading or two weeks of trading. Twenty days signify almost a month. So I'm looking at the two weeks against monthly uh, closing prices. So you can see on this one is a sample of EMEA futures S and P. Um, no, the obviously the blue one is your know, nine MA. The the <clears throat> sorry, the blue one is your twenty MA. The red one is your nine MA. So you can clearly see how whenever there's a crossover, you know the nine crossing above the twenty usually signaling uptrend, where the nine crossing below the twenty is usually signaling a downtrend. So that's when an opportunity for you to enter as well as exit. Okay, so here's another example. Uh, basically, this is an E mini uh, SP uh, using the 9 and 20 moving average. So, the one highlighted in yellow is basically position for you to buy. Uh, and we can clearly see the 9 MA is crossing against the 20. And now, um, violation of a trend uh, moving average 9 is actually very critical. A lot of times, you always face a false breakout. So, if you are long in the market, you have seen how you know if you've seen the charts behave uh you know for quite a long period of time you can roughly know when will be a false breakout and when will not be um so again i think i will not go too deep on that but you no know, it's a simple illustration whenever the nine crosses 20 from below is usually signaling a buy when nine crosses um you know from above down the 20 lines usually signaling a sell so the yellow the yellow circle lines are basically showing you positions to buy and the blue line the blue circle line is showing you positions to sell. So this is on uh, micro goal. Um you can clearly see this is a very nice chart. Or you can see how you know the 9 MA just crosses above the 20 MA with significant volume. You can clearly see the down there the volume was huge. So thereby indicating the strength in the market. So buyers are in the market. To really push up the market so if you are just beginning in the rally you should hold into this position you know uh, and you should write the trend 
I think this was the announcement whereby the Federal uh, Reserve was announcing the unlimited QE. So like I said, between a between, uh, few hours, it was up to 100 over US dollars. So these are the key things that, you know, parameters that you can use, especially when you are looking at a particular market. Now, um, <clears throat> so we have covered major trend. We have covered moving average. And next one, I'd just like to uh, talk about on Haken Ashi. Um, so Haken Ashi is basically a type of candlesticks. Uh, it's not your common candlesticks. It's actually, uh, we call it the average candlesticks. It's actually smoothened out. Okay, and um, you can clearly see that uh, if you're using Haken Ashi relatively to the normal candlesticks, Haken Ashi actually, the bars are all uh, smoothened out and you can't really recognize some of your common candlesticks pattern. But Haken Ashi will help you to denote whether is it on an uptrend or is it on a downtrend. To give you a clear example, I'll just show you uh, this particular example. When you see a red bar in Haken Ashi, is telling you to pretty much find an opportunity to sell. When you see a green bar in Haken Ashi, it's always telling you position to buy in a market. So the colors denotes, it's very average from a normal candlesticks and it denotes whether it's a downtrend bar or it's uptrend bar. So it's very clear for you to, you know, for you to decide whether uh, what kind of setups should you be entering. Now, just to give you an example, to illustrate an example, um, on the left, we have the Haken Ashi, which is really smooth out the curve or, or rather the average of the each candlesticks. And on the right is the normal candlesticks. So if you are trading on the normal candlesticks, you can see that every single instances, you'll be longing the market and you'll be shorting the market. So there's no clear direction. But as compared to Haken Ashi, you can clearly see if you are holding, if you are entering a long position, you should be holding into a long position. Or if you are entering a short position, you should be holding the short position for an amount of time. So these are the benefits of using Haken Ashi um, as compared to the candlesticks. Now, um, this is also a very clear example. If you just look at the Haken Ashi bar itself on the most left of the chart, you can see the Haken Ashi is already pointing a sell signal which is represented by a red bar. That was before even uh, the MA crosses each other. So the sell signal was given by Hikan actually much earlier compared to your moving average. Um, so actually in certain ways, Hikan actually do comes, uh, you know, as uh, quite a good uh, indication on how the strength of the market is, the strength of the buyer and the seller. Um, so in most of my trading, I always incorporate Hikan actually as compared to the candlesticks. Of course, um, I'm flexible in the sense that whenever I couldn't see a proper signal in Haken Ashi, I would do switch back to candlesticks to see where some of the common candlesticks patterns appear. Because when you use a Haken Ashi, you don't tend to see this type of uh, common candlesticks patterns like your doji or even uh, uh, bearish patterns you know, on the normal candlesticks. Uh, you, you can't really see it. <clears throat> okay, so... Here again, a simple illustration on trade setup. So whenever every time you see a Haken Ashi on a sell down bar, you'll be thinking to short. So at that point in time, um, when you see a second or third bar on a Haken Ashi to be on the sell side, you'll be thinking position to sell. Same goes when you see a Haken Ashi on a buy signal. Whereas on the second bar, on the third bar, if you see a, a continuation or a green bar, you should con you should think to long the position. Now, um, so that incorporates the candlesticks and the moving average. The last but not least, the risk management. Now, this is the most key to trading uh, success, I would say, um, because majority of the traders will always have hard time manage, managing their risk. They always think of a fast gain, but you know, uh, not measuring their risk. Okay. Um, now, if you are trading without a stop loss in place, you know, um, as they always say, uh, you're basically driving without putting a sit out. Um, and I always recommend traders who are new to the market. When you start trading, always think of every position that you enter. Always think of your stop loss levels. Never think that, you know, you, you'll be watching the market, you know, it's all right. You know, you're on a screen. If you are trading on, you know, like the announcements effect, 
it does it is not only a movement between five minutes per se it, it can be a movement within a second you know even say for example you take a break and you go for a toilet break and the moment you come back the position can be against you without a stop loss you're definitely in a much uh, perilous situation so i always recommend uh, beginner traders to always have stop losses you know um, obviously when you're more comfortable you are in the market for a bit of time whether you want to have a dynamic stop loss or you want to have a mental stop loss that's fine you know as long as you know how to manage your way out okay um a common thing is always you have to look at your risk to reward ratio um standard rule of thumb is always you want to look at you know one to two rewards ratio you're willing to you know gain two points for by risking one point okay um I think that's fair enough, uh, but obviously when you are experienced enough, you know you you tend to have a bit more higher reward. But again, uh, the par the old paradigm says high reward always measured with higher risk. So these are the things that as a trader you need to balance. Um, now the thing that I want to share with you today is this key stop loss mentioned using an average true range, uh, which is an indicator. <clears throat> now average true range is basically to measure the volatility. Uh, of a particular indices, uh, the average volatility. So, say for example, if I'm looking at the daily ATR for S and P 500. Um, by the way, this was taken I think probably a, a month or a month half ago, uh, which is about 30 to 50 points daily. But the current ATR for S and P 500 is easily about 80 points. So, as a trader, you do have to make sure that your stop losses is as close to the ATR level. You make sure you have a stop loss that's 80 points range. Uh, you know, obviously you can adjust accordingly the multiples through the multiples of ATR. It can be a two times ATR, which is, you know, if it's the ATR is 80 points, you can do 160 points stop loss. But then again, your make sure reward is double of that, you know. Um, and you can use this range, this ATR range sort of like a stop loss range. You, know? uh, you can use it as a profit taking target. You know, like I said, if you're only expecting 50 points loss, you make sure you are aiming for 100 points profit. So just an example, um, this is micro e mini S and P five hundred. So you can clearly see it was a good. Uh, the current scenario here looks like a good uptrend, and you'll be thinking even in an uptrend you'll be thinking too long. You no, know, don't think of shorting it. So if you're thinking too long and you want to enter this position, let's say you enter a long position at two three three point five, and the ATR currently reading is about twenty points, which means that you know your stop loss level that you should put is. Between two three one three, you want to round it up, you know, you can two three one up to you. Okay. And if you just based on the risk to reward ratio, two to one, so technically you should be aiming for a profit of uh you know 40 points, which put you at a profit taking target at 2373. So that's how you use uh you know ATR to manage your risk. And always use this because you know if you are more of a swing trader, you don't look at positions all the time, you tend to get stop up. So having this ATR will tell you that you know, once you hit the ATR range for the day, technically the market has moved against you. Of course, there's always a whipsaw in, in between, but ATR will definitely be something of a gauge whereby if something is not right, you're out of the market. As simple as that. Okay. Now, these are simple, this is some illustration of trade setups. So basically, um, no buy signal is when, you know, uh, the nine crosses the 20 from both with buy signal. Uh, the key thing is that if you can see the red bar here, um, it was actually, it's, you can get pretty much stopped out by that, but it was a false breakout and then it continued. Okay, and there's also another buy signal towards the right. So this is um, a quite clear setup using the moving average and using the Haken energy. So you got two confirmation, one is the crossover of the moving averages, and the second one is your Haken actually green bars. Okay, I'm not going to go too deep on uh, calculating the formula of how we derive that average of the bar. Um, this I'll just leave it as it is. You can research it on the internet. You can find more information on Google. Um, but we're just going to leave it for this presentation. Now, other aspect of consideration in, in terms of trading will be um, time frame. Now, the time frame that I always use because I'm always on an intraday basis. I I'm more to a scalper, so sometimes my my preference of time frame could be even five minutes. 
it ranges from four hours to five minutes, uh, daily four hours, five minutes. So that the kind of time frame analysis. Uh, again, time frame uh, analysis always matters to individual preference. You know, what kind of appetite uh, are you? Are you a high risk taker? You know, then you're a high risk taker, you should look at a longer time frame. If you're a short term risk taker, you should go for uh, uh, probably a medium range or probably a short term time frame. But then again, shorter time frame will always encourage you to always enter and exit the market. So therefore, you'll be generating a lot of volume. Okay. So these are the key aspects that you always need to take into account whenever you, you're looking to the market. Uh, whether what kind of time frame you should be comfortable at. <clears throat> so this will show you an illustration. This is on micro e mini down. Um, daily you can see that it is clearly on a downside. Four hours showing you a consolidation pattern. Thirty minutes starting to show to show a bit of upside breakout. So by this analysis you can see that the overall trend of Dow Jones is still down. But it's very crucial to see the thirty minute. Are we seeing a breakout? If we see a breakout, that means Dow Jones is in a short term basis, it's going to be a rally. Now, how strong the rally is, we're going to see whether it can last in a four hour basis. So, these are some of the time frame analysis that you can do whenever you are watching the market. <clears throat> um, now, obviously, like I mentioned, if you compare 30 minutes and a five minutes time frame, five minutes will always have a lot of buy and sell signal. And that could be quite disturbing. So, you know, if you are someone that is, um, you know, uh, very, you, you don't want tend to generate so much volume, try to go on a longer time frame basis. But then again, your risk and reward uh, will have to commensurate to that. Um, another key aspect which I like to highlight is on volume. And volume tells a lot. I think volume tells the psychology of the market. So, just to illustrate an example, doing an uptrend and if the volume is low what tells you about the uptrend is it sustainable it's unlikely to be as sustainable because the volume is not there the market participants are not buying the uptrend rally so volume plays a very key role especially when you want to understand the psychology of the market and i think this is as a trader we really we need to be very mindful of how the volume uh, reacts to a particular price so um, you know, if an uptrend is sustainable by sustained by a strong volume, that means the market participants believe in that rally and they are in the market. So that is created by higher volume and vice versa. So as a trader, you must be always mindful of the volume and you know you pay a bit more attention. So just to illustrate, um, you see the downtrend, it was quite aggressive, it was accompanied by strong volume. And during the upside, it was also accompanied by strong volume. That's why the rally is sustainable. So if you are thinking, if you are into a rally, whether it's an uptrend or downtrend, do watch out volume and observe the volume. Is it on a very strong basis? If it's a strong basis, that means you should be very comfortable that the rally can sustain, whether it's on an uptrend or a downtrend. Now, um, I think handling losses is something that every trader will have to go through regardless of your experience, whether you're new, you're you know, in the market for a very long time, everyone needs to encounter this phase where you have to handle your losses. Um, it's a whole topic altogether, really. Trading psychology right now is, is in a hot topic and it can be a whole uh, webinar by itself. Uh, but like I said, you know, um, it's always a key parameter in the overall trading journey. So handling losses is very important. Um, you know, if you have four consecutive days of losses, technically you should be out of the market. You should take a break. Um, again, some people are very risk averse. Whenever they have you know, one or two days of considered losses, they stop the whole entire month. Uh, that should not be uh, encouraged. Uh. In fact, you know, you should you know, be, you, what you can do is, whenever you face this kind of string of losses, always the first thing you need to do, reduce your exposure. If you are trading on, you used to trade on, let's say, two lots or three lots per time. You should reduce it down to one. Okay. Um, reduce your size exposure, reduce your lot size. And from there, when you gain your confidence back again, start back again. But the key thing is don't give up. Because once you give up, you're pretty much out of market. You are not in tune with the market. So technically, you miss the whole market dynamic. Um, and 
position sizing, which I will not talk much in this uh, webinar, is also another key parameter. Uh, but like I said, whenever you're faced with consecutive streak of losses, always remember, reduce your exposure as much as you can. Uh, and always, as a, if you're new to the industry, if you're new to the journey, the trading journey, always start with one lot. Never go beyond one lot until you're very comfortable of how your trading journey is. Then from there, you start to size it up. Okay. Um, now, um, if you ask for advice, um, you know, I always receive this a lot. How to, what's the best advice to make consistent money? The answer is simple. Consistently minimize your loss. The keyword is minimize your loss. Um, a lot of traders, they do good in you know, making money. But when they are faced with losses, their losses are huge. And it could be just one instant or a couple instances. They could wipe up their whole entire account. So the key thing to a successful trading journey is always to minimize, consistently minimize your loss. Um, and, you know, whether you use stop loss levels, you make sure stop loss levels are tight, you know, and you make sure you're very disciplined with that. Um, I think that generally will, will keep you in the game longer. So again, I like to emphasize for those who are, you want to start your journey, you know, uh, as a fresh start trader, always thinking of how to consistently minimize your loss. The gains will come eventually, but you know, what you have to, you have to have the right mind and the right mindset to always be thinking how to minimize the loss. Okay. Um, so I think ATR is a good risk management tool that you can use uh, whenever you're looking on how to use a stop loss range. <clears throat> now, last part of our trading plan, which is very crucial, is important to keep a tab of your performance, which is by trading record. Um, you know, every day as a trader, you know, uh, you trade, you have your wins, you have your losses, you have multiple trades, you know, and each of the trades are very different. So, you know, because market dynamics changes every second. So that if you have a trade review, it does help you to able to understand what are the things that you have done wrong, what are the things that you can improve, or what are the things that you should continue to do, especially when you have, you have a winning rate. Okay. And now some of the key things that uh, usually I record, this is for, it's more of a personal preference. It's always, you know, standard things are profit and loss, commission, volume, you know, uh, your end day cash or end day equity, or, or could be even remarks on your profit, uh, on, on your profit loss. Okay. Uh, these are all some of the key things that it helps you in building up a trading review. And from there, time and again, if you ever, especially when you're facing strict of consecutive losses, this trading review will help you to come back into track. What are the things that you should improve? What are the things that you should remove? And what are the things that you can do better? So trading review is always very important. Uh, this is just some examples. Uh, you know, you, you can even plot it on your Excel now. You can plot it on Excel. You can pretty much measure, you know, on the monthly basis, on a daily basis, how's your equity line, how's the volume line, have you been doing a lot of volume lately, you know, especially when markets volatile, you should be doing a lot of volume, you know, and higher volume means your profit and loss should be higher. Um, so these are some of the things that you can do and analyze yourself if you have a trading record. So therefore, trading record is important, especially when you want to track your success and performance. Now, conclusion. Um, I don't emphasize enough is you must always have a trading plan at the minimum to start with. Um, I do say trading is a very persistent journey. It's not a, a one time off. Um, if you really want to take this journey seriously, it's a persistent journey. Um, the best is you try not to give up. You know, you just make sure you have to be disciplined enough to employ uh, the risk management uh, procedures and which I just highlighted earlier, you know, um, and like I said, it's a journey. You, it will never be ending. In fact, um, this current period of time for a trader is the best because the volatility is back. It's the best time to trade. Um, if you ask me for an outlook, I would say the outlook is not bright. Uh, you just look at how the global pandemic situation plays out. It's not going to be, there's, there's no light in the tunnel yet. So I think with current, this current grooming, climate is set to stay. Um, if you're thinking of taking trading as more like a part-time basis, I have experienced and seen a lot of people who take trading as a part-time basis. I'm not saying that, you know, um, it's no good or whatever. It's just a matter of opinion. Um, if you 
want to take trading as a serious uh, pursuit, you should trade take trading on a full-time basis. I know it's not easy, but it's a decision that you have to, to make. Um, so have you seen how some of the successful proprietary traders or some of the successful long-term traders, majority of them started off as a full-time trader and they trade it as a business. So you can see from result and from past experience, um, these are the things that you, you need to look at. So how do you start your first step? Um, simple as it is, you know, you start, if you don't have a trading account yet, please start to have one, please open up an account. Um, I think Philip Futures is very kind enough. They have very good support. They are able to help you to start your journey with. And like I said, if you want to take trading as a business, you must take trading as a serious business. Um, whereby you put your full commitment, you put your full, uh, your full hard work effort into it. Because it's where like you're putting your hard work effort for a business. So trading is no different. And never fail to plan. You know, uh, especially if you are new in your journey, you must always plan. Um, so a lot of homework, you know, as a trader, a lot of people ask me, do you do homework? Yes, we, I do. And the homework is in the sense that you do a lot of back testing. So some weekends, you, you take your time off, you actually look at charts. You, you actually employ your strategy and see whether it fits your particular goal. If it doesn't, you keep changing your strategy. So being a trader is not like, it's so easy. You know, you have actually a lot of work you need to do. And last but not least, be consistent. So now this idea of be consistent is very unique uh, in a way that, you know, a lot of uh, traders like to hit a one, one buck win, meaning, you know, well, I'm going to hit the home run. With one trade, I'm going to hit the home run. I'm going to make that 100 uh, 100% win on the first trade or that particular trade. Now, it's not that you can't. It's that pretty much the market doesn't always give you that one buck shot. Okay? Um, I would rather be a trader that be consistently making money whether it's, it's a amount that is, you know, it doesn't meet your expectation but you are consistently making money, I think that's fair enough. Because the rule of the game is you need to be consistently uh, be making money and consistently minimize a loss. And that's how you are able to survive longer in this trading journey. Um, because if you are not consistent, you know, if you are only hitting one buck shot and the next two trades is going to kill you, there's no point. Okay, so like I always say, be consistent. And to be one of the key things to be consistent is you also need to be very flexible. The market is always changing. You know, the market doesn't change to your favor. The market always changes. You have to change to market favor. So I always uh, you know, encourage young traders or even new traders to always be flexible in their approach as well. So um, that's pretty much sum up um, the webinar today. And just before I end, I'd just like to share my experience um, as a proprietary trader. Uh, I just, my ex colleague I just mentioned, Vincent, I used to be from Philip, uh, Philip as a broker, was leading a marketing team. Um, and I decided to pursue the interest, trading interest to join a proprietary firm because that's, that's my interest eventually. Um, and currently, I'm just trading commodities, mainly commodities, mainly indices, palm oil, soybean, crude oil, you know, and even the micro e-mini uh, e indices. Um, now, the, really the home, take play that you, the home take play that you can take from this webinar is um, you need to start off with the interest. And from there, interest, you need to develop and you need to pursue it further. Um, there's, there's no easy way out, to be frank. Um, if there's anyone else in the a, in, in a market that tells you there's always an easy way out, or in other words, there's always a holy grail, um, I believe he doesn't really capture the whole market dynamic, especially when market dynamic now changes everything. So it, it is very much depending on whether you have that trading interest in the first place. Um, obviously, it's always good to start somewhere. And like I said, you can always start by having an account, create an account, you know, and start your trading journey. What a better way to start now when you know, the market is so volatile. Okay, so um, I'm just going to um, pause here and hand it back over to Winston. Um, I just before I pass it over to Winston, I'm just going to share with you one uh, quote here from OneTap. OneTap is actually a very uh, famous trader. Uh, 
I think it's very good in terms of uh, psychology as well. Now, a peak performance trader is totally committed to being the best and doing whatever it takes to be the best. The keyword is whatever, whatever it takes to be the best. He feels totally re responsible for whatever happens and thus can learn from mistakes. The keyword is thus can learn from mistakes. So ego is a killer here, definitely. But the ability to learn your, from your mistakes is also very important as a trader. So these people typically have a working business plan for trading because they treat trading as a business. Okay, so with that, um, I will end my part here and I'll hand it over to Vincent for the Q&A. All right, thank you, uh, David, for your sharing. So now it's our Q&A section. Uh, there are some questions here, David. Okay, the first question is, uh, is it suitable for holding long term for mini gold futures since few days gold price rebound back to 1,700 points? Okay, uh, I think that's a very good question. Um, now, um, I, I know the person who asked the question, you have a view of the market. You have a view that go you know, towards the mid to long term tend to be a bit more bullish. The thing about futures is that you have expiry. So if you tend to hold a contract that is too short, you need to roll over. That's where you have roll over costs. Um, so what I would suggest is, you know, um, try to hold a contract, you know, quarter to six months if you have a longer term view, because then every six months you tend to do the roll over. Instead of, you know, every month you want to do a roll over, you'll be quite uh, costly in, in that sense. So I would say, if you have a view on goal, uh, probably six months to 12 months out, it tend to be bullish. Um, try to hold a, a futures contract, which is a six months forward from now. I think CME uh, market is very deep. You know they have contracts up to two years, so there's no issue for you, uh, you know, uh, to have a position six months uh, forward positions right now. Hmm. Okay. Thank you, David. So next next question is, uh, may I know what kind of product or factor will affect gold futures price unless economy recession and COVID nineteen? Wow, um, I think my earlier presentation I mentioned was uh, gold is indeed very unique right now. Um, if you look at how gold has performed the past couple of weeks, the plunge in downturns actually triggered the plunge in gold. That's very unique because if you see downturns, you know, everybody will be expecting, oh, economy is no good. You should rush to gold. You should buy gold. But that's not the case. So gold, uh, I would say gold has uh, a bit different relationship now. Uh, what factors that can actually uh, move gold or stimulate gold price will really depends on how the economy perform actually. Um, how you know you look just look at how Federal Reserve react. They're doing unlimited QE, and that's actually creating inflationary bubble. Uh, and everybody should be rushing to gold, but we don't see that. So I think gold is very peculiar now. Uh, if you ask me honestly, what are the factors? I'm still looking at the economy per se. Um, I'll I do think that as the economy gets worse, you know, uh, you know, obviously with COVID nineteen pandemic, uh, not having a solution in sight, um, I think gold will still be generally favored. Uh, whether can it go higher from this level? It needs to be a different catalyst. I I don't see much of factor that can really push gold into a higher level from this current level, unless it's it's going to be a very severe economic downturn, then I think gold will be in question again. Okay, thanks, David. Uh, next question is, do you use hiking SG to enter market and hold position, or do you enter market on normal candlestick, then switch to hiking SG when have position? Sorry, uh, Vincent, could you repeat your question again? Uh, sure, Ken. Okay, the question is, do you use hiking SG to enter market and hold position? Or do you enter market on normal candlestick, then switch to hacking SG when have position? Ah, okay. Uh, that's a very good question. Um, now for most trade setups, uh, when I enter, I normally use hacking SG, uh, because it's actually smooth out the candle. So whenever I see a, a probably the second candle onwards, a green bar, I'll think to long, a red bar, I'll think to short. Uh, obviously I will see also the MAs whether are they crossing or not. Um, obviously, once I enter in the position, and you know, as, as long as I still see the bar going green, I'm still safe to hold that long. 
But when the bars are starting to turn red, I would be thinking to close out a position. Now, closing out a position, I, I usually do two things. I look at the first sign where the green bar turned to red or, or the second bar, whichever. Or I can also use a candlestick, the normal candlestick to see any bearish patterns happening. It could be a dodgy or it could be a, a bearish formation. Then from there, I'll just exit. So that's how I use the Haken as she uh, play. Okay, thanks, David. Uh, there's the last question here. Uh, please elaborate what you mean by uh, ATL period for how long really depends on your time frame. Okay, um, now ATR period usually I use on a 30 minutes time frame because that's the 30 minutes time frame I use for trading. Um, obviously, if you're on a five minutes trading time frame, you use an ATR of five minutes. Um, but ATR is as a tool is more suitable for holding a longer period uh, position. Say for example, if you are a swing trader, you know you don't look at five minutes, you look at four hours or even look at daily, then your ATR should be based on the daily period. So the ATR time frame is actually based on the time frame that you use for trading. So like the examples that I show, most examples that I show is actually based on 30 minutes time frame. Hmm. Okay, thank you, David. So uh, that's all for our seminar. So thank you for joining our seminar. Uh, if you have questions, you may email uh, to you, uh, sorry, to us, and we will try to revert uh, as soon as possible. So let's say uh, if you want to open account, currently we are by appointment only. To make the appointment, uh, you can call to our branch hotline. So please fill up the webinar feedback form and hope today's webinar will share you something. All right, thank you, David. Okay. Thank you for joining. Good night, everyone. Okay, thank you.